And to get ready for the epic clash in France, we once again have both Luises joining us in CBS Sports HQ. Luis Miguel Echegaray in New York and in Paris. Luis Garcia ahead of Liverpool and Real Madrid. Lucho, I'm going to start with you first. How do we anticipate Real Madrid will attack Liverpool on Saturday? Hello guys, saw me, Luis Miguel, good to talk to you guys from here, from Paris, where the atmospheres are building up a little bit. You can see a lot of people walking around the streets uh, ahead of this uh, fantastic class we got at the weekend, where I expect this Real Madrid to start pressing to start pressing from the first minute because it's the best way that this Real Madrid can approach this game. They know that uh, Liverpool is going to be that kind of style of play, bringing out the high pressure, the tempo, the intensity. But Real Madrid have played that way as well against uh, Manchester City or uh, the first game against Chelsea at all, uh, when they went uh, to London. And I think that's the best approach because if you start sitting down at the back, you know that Liverpool at the end is going to have chances, you're going to create moments, and the ability of the players that they go up front, they can kill the game in every single second. So I expect a very uh, aggressive uh, Real Madrid with pressure, with Valverde, a player who can uh, kind of uh, uh, get into that 11 and start uh, playing on that right side a little bit, like a th the third striker or even a, a half midfielder trying to break those lines with the speed. And of course, with Karim Benzema and Vinicius Junior, the main threat for this Real Madrid. High pressure, regain the ball, and the creative players in the middle of the park, Cross and Modric, trying to link with Benzema, that is, of course, the finisher of this team and, of course, the top scorer of the competition. Lucho Garcia is spot on, specifically thinking about how Real Madrid need to be aggressive uh, against Liverpool because you kind of have to fight fire with fire. Listen, one of the most important things about this game that we have to remember is that we're talking about two teams who are very unique in the way that they represent themselves on the pitch. On one side, you have Liverpool, who have a clear identity of who they are, right? They know they have this heavy metal football that they want to progress through the European competition and the Premier League. And then you have Real Madrid, who basically, they look at the opponent's identity, and their identity is to rip it off. And that's what Real Madrid have to do. In order to, for Real Madrid to continue on this path and trying to attack Liverpool, they're going to have to be very good off the ball because Liverpool, year after year, are getting more comfortable in possession, and they can kill you with either a 5-6 pass combination setup or a long ball. Real Madrid need to make sure that whatever happens, whenever they lose the ball, they are compact. So that really falls a lot to Casemiro, who's going to be protecting that back line, and it's going to fall a lot as well to Alaba and Eda Militao, who are going to have to be really attentive on how their fullback could progress forward. But Real Madrid have a very, very long list of the homework against Liverpool. All right, so that is the Spanish side perspective. Let's move over to the English side in Liverpool. Lucho, again, something that Luis Miguel had referenced. We know the heavy metal. We know the gig and press. And then there's that front three. Do we anticipate Luis Diaz, Sadio Mane, and, of course, Mo Salah? How do you anticipate that Liverpool front three and the attack will be on Saturday? Sounds good when you talk about Luis Diaz, uh, Salah and Mane up front. He's uh, one of those uh, special strikes for the, the, uh, you can find in Liverpool. But you got Jota, you got Firmino, players who can also add something uh, later on the game if needed. I think that the, the introduction of Luis Diaz since the moment he arrived to Liverpool has been exceptional. He's a player who is ball aggressive, uh, fearless when he's on the ball. He's not afraid to just receive the ball and start beating players on 1v1. It's quick and uh, that ability to, to uh, drop the shot in some occasion is just fantastic. And the moving money to that centre forward role, I think, gave a lot of strength to the Liverpool side because the two centre backs, they are going to have. Uh, they're going to need to have an eye on him every single time because his power, his speed and his finishing has been fantastic in the whole season. So I'm expecting a very aggressive uh, Liverpool from the first minute. Still a little bit of concern who is going to play in that middle role because Fabinho got injured, Thiago got injured in the last game, so we haven't seen him for, for a couple of three weeks. And we need to know really who is going to give that balance in the middle of the field to this Liverpool. I expect Fabinho to get involved, but I'm looking forward to see if he's going to be Henderson next to him, he's going to be Curtis, he's going to be... Uh, Thiago available for this game, so uh, I can't wait to see what Jurgen Klopp is got planned for the middle of the bar, but up front, I expect those three to make the damage. Yeah, let me go back to that midfield area where Lucho was talking about. That, to me, is the biggest focus, because if Thiago Alcantara can't play in this game, 
somebody that's been so important in the Champions League, somebody that can distribute the ball, be the architect, and by the way, win a lot of balls back. He's an absolute engine. Then I'm a little bit worried about that midfield trio going up against the likes of Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, and Casemiro. So it's going to be very important to see what happens in that midfield. You know, we had Jim Beglin on Keo Lasso earlier this week, and he said, you know, James Milner actually could be somebody, you know, the job that he gives you, you know, he always will give you a 7 or 8 out of 10, a conventional midfielder that will be the workhorse. But on the other side, right, you have to think about, can Naby Keita be that person, that di differentiator? But the key is Fabinho. The one player, I think he's third in the Champions League in tackles one. He's going to be monumentally important in that midfield for Liverpool. And on the other side of that, I think the Andy Robertson-Ernesto Valverde battle is going to be key. Andy Robertson has three lungs. He doesn't stop running. So Ernesto Valverde is going to have to really keep up. So look for, obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Andy Robertson, and what happens in the midfield. Guys, two terrific clubs, two terrific gaffers. We have Jurgen Klopp and, of course, Carlo Ancelotti. Luis Miguel Echegaray, I'm going to start with you. Do you favor one over the other or trust one over the other on Saturday? Why do you give me the tougher question, <laughs> uh, Tommy Trent? This is so hard. When you look at these two managers, you can't help but love both of them. And they are actually very similar, maybe not tactically, but they are from a personal standpoint. The players that play under them love them. They are so in love with these managers because these two managers, Jurgen Klopp and Carlo Ancelotti, will do anything for their squad. And that's why, in part, why these two teams are so successful in this competition. There was a great moment in the uh, PSG when Kylian Mbappé scored the second goal against Real Madrid, and it was 2-0, and everybody thought Real Madrid was going down. Rodrigo, behind Carlo Ancelotti, went like this. Calm down. Because he knew and he trusted in Carlo Ancelotti and everything that he delivers. Jurgen Klopp, equally. The, I mean, can you think of another manager out there that has the most trust and the most, the biggest friend, friendliest relationship with his players? It's a very important trait to be a good man manager. It's very difficult to differentiate. Having said that, in a 90-minute situation, in an extra time situation, who do I go with? At this point, and Lucha is going to hate me. At this point, I have to go with Carlo Ancelotti. Look at what he's done. Man City, Chelsea, PSG, and every single time it has worked. And he's now on course on making a quadruple in the final of the Champions League. He would become the first manager to win four Champions League titles. And what's amazing about it is he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He just wants his players to win. But I love Jurgen Klopp. How could you not? He's a tremendous manager. It's just that I have to go a little bit more for Carlo Ancelotti here. No, I'm glad. I'm glad that you say Ancelotti so I can go in the other side. But <laughs> it's fine. I totally understand you, Luis Miguel, because Ancelotti, with that experience, with that way of, uh, of approaching the, the manager's perspective, is just fantastic. I mean, the experience that he's got in so many different countries, different competitions, is just remarkable. The way that he managed every single aspect of the game, not only tactically, as you will mention, but the personal perspective of every single player. Rodrigo wasn't involved, and he became one of the key players at the end of the season. Valverde wasn't playing and he became and that's because he knows what he, the, every single player needs to perform well they they haven't played for the maybe three four months just maybe a few minutes but in the moment that they were requested they always perform and that's something that we have to give the credit to uh, Ancelotti because he knows what he has to say and how to, to behave with them every single moment we saw them uh, the treatment with the Militao at the end of the season chatting with him even though that they were losing at the game chatting with Benzema next to them on the bench that's something that is very difficult to to create so that connection with the players but in the other side we got a manager who is a fantastic uh, analyst of the game a fantastic um, uh, uh, manager on the way of tactics he knows exactly what he has to do but also is fantastic on the other side in the side of managing the players managing the egos managing the persons and we've seen what happened with the Liverpool during the whole season they needed to rotate but every single player who had involved during the game he performed and he performed even better than the one he was leaving the pitch so I'm gonna go with uh, Jurgen Klopp because they've been in every single competition fighting until the last game they won two already they almost won the Premier League just lost it in the last game and because Manchester City was better and they are in the Champions League final so I'm gonna 
to give a lot of credit to Jurgen Klopp in this way of managing, but also because the squad that they have is just unbelievable. So amazing if you got, uh, have to have a look to every single player. So in this occasion, I go to Jurgen Klopp. Probably in the scores, I'm going to go to Liverpool as well. <laughs> yeah, I see it there. Reference there. Guys, we're in stoppage time. One minute left. 30 seconds each. Give me a winner. Who do you think comes your way? Luis Miguel and then Lucho, who kind of hinted that already. This is prediction limbo for me, Tommy Tran. It's the toughest decision I've had to make in the last few Champions League finals. I go back and forth, go back and forth just because of the overall quality of both teams. But I have to go with Real Madrid because I have to believe in the romantic journey that they continue to do under Carlo Ancelotti. It's going to be difficult, and I'm sure I'm going to be wrong, but I'm going with a Real Madrid win in 90 minutes, 2-1. You could be right, you could be right, I want to give you that, but uh, I know that you are a white inside you and you wanted to Real Madrid to perform well at the final. I'm going to go with Liverpool, of course, it's my former club, I think that they go more than enough, more arguments at Real Madrid, I think that the players at the moment, they are in a great momentum, and I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory for Liverpool and see lifting the Reds, the seventh of the Champions League uh, finals. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.